that. Yeah, we're going to do licenses first. Okay, Public Safety Committee is called to order. Let the record reflect that all committee members are present. We're going to start with item number 59-2023-05-04, new operator's license bartender class D operator application for Crystal Gleason. This is Ms. Gleason's second appearance. Ms. Gleason here. Okay, was there any correspondence from Ms. Gleason? No. Okay, is there a motion on the floor? Motion to deny. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 60, 2023-0519, new operator's license, bartender class D operator application for James Ewald. This is Mr. Ewald's first appearance. Is Mr. Ewald here? Okay, he is not here. Is there any correspondence? No. Okay, is there a motion? Place on hold for... Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Item 61-2023-0520, new operator's license bartender class D operator application for Rihanna Garvey. First appearance is Ms. Garvey here. Did I pronounce that correctly? Rihanna. Please come forward. Go see right here in the middle spot. Okay, I need to get my notes. I'm sorry, I thought I was organized. Okay, welcome, Ms. Garibay. Uh, the reason why you have been called before committee is there's some things that came up on your uh, record that we want to give you an opportunity to explain to the council. Uh, to the committee, I'm sorry. And I see that you have an OWI as recent as May of 2024. You have um, two other citations that were prior from 20 to 21. Is your, uh, what is the status of your driver's license, correct? It is currently currently. an occupational. It's an occupational? Yes. Okay. And can you provide any information or proof of rehabilitation for the committee? Um, not currently, but I am in therapy. AODA specialized therapy. Okay. And has this charge been resolved? Uh, I believe so. So, I usually don't so there is it. a conviction of OWI. There's nothing pending. You, you yeah, I've been to court and everything. Okay, yeah. you've been to court. Do you have any more pending? No. Okay. No. okay. And usually I would note that on there, so I didn't. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's a great check, though. Right. Have you, uh, where do you plan on bartending? Happy Tap. Happy Tap, okay. Have you bartended before? Yes, I have. Okay. Are you currently bartending at Happy Tap? I have the uh, uh, provisional. Yeah, the provisional, sorry. Okay. All right. Um, and what were the circumstances surrounding the OWI? Um, I was coming home from a bar just down the street from my house, and I was caught speeding, and an officer said I was with a friend and said it smelled like alcohol, so then did all the tests and everything, and um, the clues came out, you know, that I was under the influence. And, um, I mean, it's my first offense of it. I've learned I'm in therapy now for drinking, so that's resolving that. I feel like I'm in a better place altogether. Um, I'm in school uh, as well, so that's kind of my main focus. Okay, and my, my question was going to be, is this your primary income? Yes, bartending. Okay, yes. and you're going to school yes. otherwise? Yes. Okay. Congratulations on Thank that. You. That's good to hear. Um, do any of the other committee members have any questions? Madam Chair. Go ahead, Mr. How would you get here note. tonight? My boyfriend. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other committee members have any questions? Okay. Yes. Sure. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, you mentioned rehabilitation. What have what have you done? Um, just right now, just the therapy for it. Um, and so I go. I've been going like every other week. Um, he's kind of weaning me out now. Just you know, as I'm progressing with it, and then we just discuss my relationship with alcohol and how that affects me and the people around me as well. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, Attorney Sir, when I have a question relative to, and maybe you can answer it directly, 
typically when you have an OWI, what does the court order? What did the court order for you? Um, so I had to go to a counselor. I forget the exact title of the counselor, and then they recommended, you know, they recommend either to take like the AODA classes, and then she recommended to me the counseling because uh, she pretty much was like, "You're not an alcoholic, but you have the signs to possibly become one." So that's why the therapy was recommended to me. Okay. So the court mandates that AODA assessment and treatment and then um, basically it's a first right yes. if there's not really any ramifications for not doing it other than you can't get a license okay so there's not so, like a probation or anything uh, that no. would be first in Wisconsin are non-criminal and so there'd be a revocation period for your license which you are currently on but you have the occupational license mm -hmm. there's a fine um, do you have an addition in law Oh, okay, and then there is uh, just the AODA assessment to get your license back. Okay, all and right. So the she would have had to show in proof of doing the assessment to get the occupational, and then they will revoke that occupational if if it's not followed. The assessment plan's not followed. Okay, all right. That answered my question as far as the occupational license as well. Yeah. So you've run through the steps that yeah, the, so the court has asked. Yeah. So November. Yeah, November. I am eligible to apply for my. Uh, full license back again mm -hmm. and then the classes just have to be finished by like or my sorry therapy has to be finished by like April okay and the therapist signs off on that and some of these lessons in life they're just very hard lessons right. to, yes. to learn um, so I'm sorry that you went through that I'm glad that you are looking to make some changes in your life that are positive uh, with that being said when we approve licenses we want to make sure that you're making good decisions because you're in charge of others that Absolutely. may not be able to make the greatest decision. Right. So uh, with that comes a very stern warning, you know, to you if this is approved. And uh, with that being said, I'm gonna ask one more time to do any of the committee members have any questions. I just wanted to add one more little tidbit. Yes. Uh, she mentioned that there's not an ignition interlock, which means it was under a 0.15. Okay, all right. That adds okay. more further information. It does. It does. Thank you. Do any other committee members have any questions? Is there a motion on the floor? Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Okay. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the motion carries. Good luck. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. All right. Item 62, 2023-0541. Renewal for operator's license bartender class D operator application for Janet Welch. First appearance is Ms. Welch here. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to Motion second. and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We will hold. Item 63, 20, uh, new operator's license bartender class D operator application for Nicole Burke. First appearance is Ms. Burke here. Okay. Is there a motion? I should be asking, was there correspondence? No. Okay, so no correspondence. And may we go back to uh, Ms. Welch, was there correspondence? No. Okay, so both 62 and 63 have not corresponded as to why they're not here. Is there a motion? Motion to hold. Okay, is there a second? second? Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Item 64, notification for non-renewal for 2023-25 operator's license, bartender class D operator application for Sierra Jarrett. Second appearance, Ms. Jarrett? Aye. Please come forward. Okay, and can I pass this over to either uh, Attorney Monte or Attorney Serwin to kind of give an overview of. I like it. Sure. So, just for the record and for clarification, generally I'm the advisor for the committee. For this purpose, I'm the prosecutor, and so I'll be calling witnesses. The advisor for the committee, who was already advising the committee, is Attorney Monty. Um, and so, how this will work is much like a normal hearing. Um, we don't often do these non renewal hearings, so this is going to be a little bit of a different. Um, I don't want to say burden, but it's a little bit of a different process because I'm not going to be alleging vast amounts of new incidents with new facts. This is going to be basically what you have before you, and you have to decide what you want to do with that. Um, so I'll ask questions. You'll have a chance to ask questions of any witnesses, and then you'll have a chance to present any information or any testify to whatever you feel appropriate. Okay? And then what will happen is you guys can deliberate. 
Um, there's no no closed session notice as far as I'm aware, and so it'll just be in open session, and you can speak with your attorney on what you think is appropriate. Okay. Are you okay with me calling my one and only witness? Yes. Okay. Dina Patrick, please come up. You can have a seat here. Dina Patrick? I don't know if you guys are going to be comfortable with swearing in or... I, or can you do it? You, you feel comfortable. You can feel free to okay. do it. Okay. I just make that really good. Yeah, I'll just make it up as I go. Yeah. Promise? No. Uh, and uh, if you both want it, we'll do, okay, I'll do so both because I imagine you want to okay. talk at some point, so then we'll just do it <laughs> all at once to be That's done with it. So if you want to raise your right hand, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Right. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. All right. Um, so the city will call, well, as the prosecution, the city will call Deanna Patrick. Ma'am, can you state and spell your name for the record? Deanna Patrick, D-E-Y-A-N-A-P-E-T-R-I-C-K. How are you employed? Uh, with the West Dallas Police Department. And what's your position with the West Dallas Police Department? The record supervisor. All right. And so I have in front of you what I identify as Exhibit 1. Um, Ms. Jarrett also has a copy, and I've provided copies to all older persons. Um, what is Exhibit 1? Um, it would be a summary of the Wisconsin DOT search. Um, it's her record. That's Sierra's record through the um, Wisconsin DOT. All right. DOT being Department of Transportation? Yes. And that record is maintained by the state of Wisconsin under the Department of, um, Department of Transportation? Yes. So you didn't make any of this up. This comes from a list or something. Correct. All we, right. we run it through a, the NCIC search. Okay. Um, which I'm sorry, I don't know. National. I'm not sure what that one means. Either. Um, so we run it through there, run her name, birthday, um, all the, so we know that it's her for sure. It comes back with everything for her whole driving record. And so this would be accurate from your perspective as of the date of September 1st, 2023, when you last ran it? Yes. Okay. Um, I would move this in to evidence for whatever purpose you have. Yes. Miss Jarrett, if um, my memory serves me, when you came before us, uh, well, I guess do you oh, have any questions for oh. Nick's witness? Otherwise, he can cut her loose. Oh, okay. No, I. Anyone have questions? I don't know. Do you have any questions for her? Okay. And I'm gonna have just some brief questions for her for um, Sierra as well. Okay. Go okay. ahead. Um, so we're okay to let Miss Patrick go. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, the city will next call, well, yeah, the city will next call Sierra Jarrett. Uh, Ms. Jarrett, can you say your, or spell your last name? Yep, J-A-R-R-E-C-T. All right, and where are you currently working? Reunion Restaurant. Reunion just down the road? Yes, correct. All right, and what is your position at Reunion Restaurant? Assistant General Manager. All right, what do you do as the Assistant General Manager? I oversee all the um, functions of the front of the house and the back of the house. Okay. Do you, for that position, do you require an operator's license or a bartender's license? I do. All right. What would happen if you don't have one? I'll lose my job. Okay. Um, what is your current driver's license status? It is suspended currently due to um, OE. Unpaid one. tickets? Yep. All right. Is there a point Just as one. well? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, and at a previous date, you had driven to this type of hearing, right? Correct. And you were honest with the committee at that time? Correct. Today, how did you get here? I walked from work, but I Ubered to work. Okay. <laughs> but I walked from work because I need to get over here. I saw your message. Okay. And this record that I have in front of you there, is that accurate as far as you can tell? Yes. Okay. As far as I can tell, I haven't really looked at my driving record, but knowing what happened on the 27th, I okay. don't recall. What was your last... So this is a renewal license, um, 20, 2023 to 2025. When did you first obtain a license? A bartender's license? Yeah. Do you remember generally the year, 2022, 2021? I moved back from Oakland, so I graduated from Stout in 2018, 19. So I want to say like 2020, because the first job I worked at as a bartender, actually, no, before that, sorry, 2019, because I had a Menominee Falls license, because I was a bartender at Applebee's. I want to, I believe I got a West Alice license in 2020. I like, honestly, can't remember. I think it was 2020. Because I had my baby in 2020. 2020. 
Somewhere around 2020. 20, I, I mean, yeah, 2020. Okay. okay. I, that's what I believe. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure. um, we had talked previous, actually, when you got here, we had talked, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And you had told me that you have a payment plan in order to get your license Correct. situated? Yep, because I owe the RRX, RRS due to tax. Um, so you're like a tax interceptor or whatever is going Yeah, so because um, I didn't pay it to West Alice, it went straight to the... What is that state federal? And then what you have to have a yeah, I went to the state. You have to have a you have a payment plan set up and is that payment plan does it have a final date? Yeah, I, I don't remember the exact day, but I know that I have like four hundred and fifty three dollars left. Okay, and how much are you paying a month? I'm paying like a hundred and twenty a month. Okay. So that'll be resolved sometime this year? Yes, and hopefully soon. And then you're actually on it, so that's And you goal. can't reinstate unless or until that occurs. Yeah, until that payment is finished, correct. And your expectation is to do it this year? Yes, correct. That's How will you be getting to work beyond? Uh, Uber and my mom. Okay. You said you have a child. Do you support anybody else? Yeah, just my child. Just a child. Mm -hmm. One child? Yes, I have a two-year-old. Okay. I have no further questions, but I do have some arguments towards the very end. But I know Ms. Jarrett also does. So if the board has any questions, or the committee, I'm sorry. No, you can ask. Okay. Um, Ms. Jarrett, I have a question. Actually, prior to asking a question, the reason that um, I had such a struggle with approval was the fact that you weren't abiding by the law. Correct. Um, and we typically don't have people come forward and say, yeah, I broke the law and I still want my bartender's license. So it threw me in good conscience. What decision do I make? On paper, you know, in, in person, yeah. you speak eloquently, you want a job, you have a job, you have a child support, all very important, but what's vastly important is that you don't break the law. Correct. And um, that didn't set well with me and speaking as committee chair with the majority of the, the committee. Mm -hmm. So I have one question. Mm -hmm. What is the proximity of your residence to work? I live in Menominee Falls, actually. <laughs> okay, That's so Menominee way. Falls yep. to the reunion. How yep. much does it cost you to Uber there and back? It costs, it's really dependent on what time I leave, so it can range between 25 to $30. So, is it your testimony that you pay anywhere to six, 50 to $60 a day to it, go to no, work? Not, no, not always. So it's really dependent on if I'm opening, working a midship or closing, it's dependent on if I have a ride. I'm not always Ubering unless I can't get a ride. So I'll typically ask my child's father to give me a ride, my mom to give me a ride if she's off. I'll typically try to ask somebody to give me a ride because it is expensive. But if I can't find a ride, then I'll have to Uber, okay. just due to our last encounter. All right. So. On average, how many times a week would you say that you Uber? I couldn't really give you an average. Okay. I don't have any additional questions. Do any of the other committee members have any questions? Yes. Go ahead. Um, you were saying, going on what she was saying just now, it sounds to me like you're, you're probably spending about the same amount of money that you owe just on Ubering each month. Am I correct? No, I wouldn't agree. Because it's, it's honestly, it's really dependent on if I can get a ride. If I can get a ride, I have a ride. If I can't, then I'll Uber. Okay, so but, um, are you saying that maybe once a, a week you might take an Uber? Maybe once. I don't. I, I can't give you a definite okay. number. Okay. And the other thing I have to ask you, you were saying that you're paying, making payments. Correct. Are these pay? Was this payment plan started because the state? talk to you first or did you talk to them first no did I got a, no I got plan, a letter did you make this plan that you were going to do this before they told you that this is what was no. going to happen sure no I got a letter in, in the mail saying that I owe from taxes and then it let me know like I also owe from West Alice so it was the taxes in West Alice so that is on the payment plan so you're actually paying them every month yourself correct. not from your tax return or anything like no, that. no correct I'll, okay Thank you, Alderman Turner. Does any of the other committee members have any questions? Okay, I will then pass it back to. Do you have? I, I just want to make sure she has a chance to present any evidence or information. So, basically, that's my case in chief. It's called is like what the 
time where I present evidence. Now it's your turn to present argument or evidence that you see fit. I don't really have any argument, but my only thing is like I understand what you were saying last time about like me breaking the law because since I have this record here, I was driving with a suspended license. But my only my only setback was that is like I didn't understand the correlation because I felt like when I went and did my research, like legally you can only deny somebody's license if they're like have a misdemeanor, a felony, that's something that relates to like what they're being denied for, so my bar license, and that I need that to work in order to pay my bills. And I've never once abused my liquor license or never once did anything with underage. It's just, unfortunately, my driving record, and that's because I got in a car accident, um, which is the reason why my um, license is suspended. Anything else? No, other than okay. that, no. I, I need to answer back to that yes, as far right. as on the record, the reason why I made the motion for denial is because when when you're a bartender, it's not just a matter of, you know, whether you're you're responsible for other people. If you are breaking the law, I think that substantially relates to the licensing activity. You may just be managing right now, and I don't want to say just, you may be managing the bar, being a hostess in a different uh, purview of what a typical bartender would be. But giving you that license, you could not work at reunion tomorrow and you could be bartending somewhere else. And I personally feel, and I think I stated my case as to why, I thought it substantially related it to the, the activity. So I would like clarification from Rebecca Monte in stating, you know, how does this not relate substantially if you're breaking the law? You know, um, it, it isn't just if you're drunk driving, uh, in my opinion. Uh, you have repeated offenses of not abiding by the law. And what we expect of you and what your, your license would curtail is that, A, you have a problem in the bar, you need to call the police. And you I know what I mean? I, and, no, sorry, to, not to cut you off. Right. Am I allowed to speak? I'm sorry. Well, just let me yeah, finish, yeah, and then, then you may, may yeah. definitely speak. <clears throat> but, you know, there, there's a, a host of different responsibilities. And breaking the law, I think, is a huge part of why you would be denied. So I don't know what the, the law says besides have you shown rehabilitation. Um, to me, you haven't shown re rehabilitation if you're, you're breaking the law and you come to the meeting here in, in which you admit I broke the law. And it sort of like ties our hands. Are we supposed to say, okay, anybody can come before this committee and break the law and because you feel that it doesn't fit under this purview of what licensing activity means that you get away with that. You know, we take it very seriously if you get a bartender's license, and I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but I don't think this changes my mind personally. But I would like to hear from Rebecca, uh, Ms. Monty, on, I don't on this. I think that the law is clear enough. I, I mean, I think that it's obviously set up to handle OWIs and substance abuse issues, and I think that's where the rehab comes in because they're expecting people to easily be able to show or prove right. rehabilitation from those issues. I don't think it really contemplates this specific type of situation um, because it's not specifically a substance abuse issue or a misuse of the liquor license. That's not to say that a court wouldn't agree with you that failure to adhere to the rules in one situation could mean failure to adhere in another situation, but I think it would be something that hasn't been decided by a, a court yet sufficiently enough that it would be essentially a test case and a, right. a uh, depend on what the judge happens to, how they happen to come down on it. I think it would be kind of close, to be honest, mm -hmm. in terms of what other legal authority might think about that approach to this situation. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Yes. Do you, do you mind if I give my prosecutor's input on that? Oh, no, I don't mind. Please do. Okay. So I think Attorney Monty is correct in, in a lot of that, in that this is interplay between exactly what this committee does, which is Chapter 125, alcohol licensing, and then specifically um, employment or, or license discrimination under chapter 120 or 111.335. And so what it talks about there is that um, there are certain prohibitions. One of those prohibitions, which is what I think you're 
directly speaking to is to not issue a license to somebody who's a habitual law offender. And it doesn't have to be a criminal offense, it doesn't have to be tickets, it doesn't have to be even convictions. Um, there's a lot of case law to support that. However, um, I would say 2017 or 18, the law changed to add a caveat or an exception so long as it comports or complies with Chapter 111.335, which is the discrimination part of it. And that's where that substantial evidence or substantially related comes from. So I think the issue from my perspective is um, it's open, and I agree with everybody's perception here, um, but these are operator license as opposed to Class A license or Class B license are shall issue licenses. These are ones that we don't get as much discretion on as opposed to a, a, an operator, a, an actual bar being, a, well, being issued. Um, and so when we look at these, the ones that I would point to are the operator will suspend it. If, if you want to make that argument, there's an argument there potentially that if the state doesn't trust you with a license to drive, why should the municipality trust you with a license for operating? I think on the flip side of that, the language is very specific, substantially related to license activity, not related to, not tangentially related to. And so I have concerns. Um, and I'm saying this as the prosecutor, I have concerns of whether or not this is legally supportable or supported. I think the better argument from my perspective is not necessarily, I think we could just rip this up potentially and say, okay, the license is what it is, but we expect licensees to follow the law. And if you demonstrate that you don't follow the law when you arrive, then why would we expect you? And that's not based on the license or a, a record necessarily. And so we really don't even have to talk about 111.335 in that scenario because we're not talking about a record. So I think what we have to talk about then is if we expect our licensees to follow the law, how or what can Ms. Jarrett do to demonstrate that she's going to follow the law, or what kind of short leash potentially, since she needs this to pay it back and get a license, which I think everybody has in their best interest to get a driver's license so she doesn't fall in this hole again. Um, is there any checks and balances we can put on it? This isn't a license that we can issue a conditional license on or conditions to that license, but we could do, if you were to so choose, is issue a summons and complaint in a few months um, if the license hasn't been obtained, or double check and see if there's a single new violation after this point that is related to a license, I'll issue your summons and complaint right away. I'm not trying to shoot myself in the foot for this one, and I'm not trying to give you guys pigeonhole. I'm just trying to give you options at this point because I'm in favor of having making sure people have resources and money to pay off and get back to an even ground. So that's my two cents. It's shaky, but I think there's arguments there. I'm. I'm going to implore whatever happens, Mr. Chair, is that you and I have had good conversations. The last thing you need to do is dig yourself a little bit deeper of a hole. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, he, what he said kind of sparked my memory. So 111, what he's talking about is the employment prohibition. You can't use somebody's record against them. Um, and employment and kind of, I, I always, I don't know if I, this is a law school class, but like the kind of classic example is if somebody has a misdemeanor theft, you can't refuse a job to them unless they're like handling large amounts of cash. Like it has to be related to what is going on. And that's, you know, so that's kind of the issue that I think Attorney Serwin's getting into with, well, is it substantially related to the licensed activity? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. All right, thank you both. Now, Ms. Jarrett, you wanted to say something in response? Yeah, I don't want to lose my job, but whatever decision you guys make, I have to understand it, but this, honestly, well, I would pretty much lose my job because I'm not able to operate in the capacity that I need to operate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If, if, um, if approved, I mean, can you commit to the committee at this point that you will yes. not be driving your vehicle? Yes. Okay, and if you end up catching another ticket, if you happen to get it approved, like, I will allow you guys to give me a deadline. November 1st, it'll be paid off. My license will be reenacted. Like, we can, on record, November 1st. Okay. Because I'm getting a bonus. Sorry, guys. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> really excited. Yeah, so, yes. Sure. I, I just want to say, um, one of the things that's important to us is that we have people who are out there, it's like you, you like your job, you, you work your way up to get into that point. And we want to be the last people to do that. And I think your 
attitude today is a lot different than it was last time we talked. Before it was, I, I know I'm driving without a license. I'm going to. It almost seemed like I'm going to do it tomorrow again, and I did it today. So, what do we do? We're kind of we're kind of stuck. But you're saying right now that you're making an effort not to do that. That's important, to, I think, to all of us right now. Yes. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, I'm up for a promotion, guys. So. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else have any input or questions? Okay. At this time, would there be a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Do we have uh, to do aye, a aye. roll call? I don't think we have to. All in favor? Aye. 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 Alderwoman Rinky, we had a no. vote? No. Okay. So four, yes, one, no. All right. So that's yeah. concluded. Yeah. All right, thank you. So it's going to go. Yes, yeah, so it's going to go to the <laughs> overall committee, and you could still be denied if enough of those council members, but this is half of the council, and so it'd have to be a, a lot of them. Okay. So you can stick around if you want, or I don't know if you, oh, have to, you can if you want, or you can. Uh, do you have to go back to work? Okay, I'll let them know what's going on. Miss Jarrett, I appreciate you coming forward and your candor, mm -hmm. and uh, I wish you the best. Thank and you. congratulations on your promotion. Well, well, actually, the term in my promotion. If you need to get back to work, you can go. Yeah, and I can. Yeah, we can. Know. Get to it, you. It's okay. I, honestly, I'll just let them know what's going on. Like I said, this is important for my job and my promotion. So I'll just yeah. All right, so we have three items coming back to committee for discussion. Thank you all. And we're going to start with uh, item number 5020230061, ordinance to repeal and recreate dangerous dog regulations. Uh, the recommend recommendation was to pass Alderman Haas, uh, I believe, requested item five and six to come back. Uh, what discussion are we having relative to the dog regulations? I can speak to that if you'd like. Please do. Uh, so I'm not sure if any of the committee members here have been on the Administrative Appeals Review Board, um, but that's no. where we review dangerous dog appeals that come mm -hmm. through. And so right, really you. what this was spurred on by was um, a very cumbersome and kind of unintuitive in my perspective process for police officers and for dog owners. And so my goal was to clean up the code, uh, make it a significant amount, I guess from my perspective, amount more readable. Um, it's not changing much of what we enforce. It's giving a little more discretion to law enforcement in terms of um, adding or subtracting different criteria. It's giving a little more discretion to the city attorney's office to approve certain levels of um, insurance that people would have instead of making it a million dollar coverage. And then it's shortening the timeline for the appeal closer to what the state law is and what other municipalities are. So right now we're a 30 day window for appeal, which I think makes some sense if you're talking about people doing some very heavy lifting, like putting in fences or different things. But frankly, people don't do that within that time limit anyways. They ask for extensions. And so we bumped it down to 10 days um, to get that appeal in and to comply with the order. Largely, that will be hardest on the police officers, but in talking with them, they think they can manage that. And it will be best for the community because we've got people that complain or get concerned about dogs that bite people or other dogs or escape. And then they wait 30 days and the dog is still just hanging around without any repercussions um, or any issues. And so, and that's to get to a hearing and then we go to Muni Court, and then we go to Circuit Court, and so it can last a very long time. So the goal of this is really just to clean up the code. It doesn't change the procedure. It doesn't change the underlying goals. It gives more discretion. It cleans it up, and it shortens the timeline so the community can feel safer from my perspective. Okay. Uh, that sounds good to me. Uh... However, when I was reading through, there was one thing that stood out and just needed clarification is um, aggressive dogs. That has to be something that is off property. So say, for example, neighbor A is walking by the house with her dog and the dog charges the fence line, jumps up, could potentially scratch through. I saw scratching, biting, things like that. We've gotten calls, I've gotten calls as Alder uh, that, you know, 
somebody believes that dog who's tied in their yard, even though there's no fence line, sh it, it, because it's an aggressive bark or it charges down to the sidewalk. It's not able to get to the sidewalk, but how do we, how do we view that in, as far as the ordinance? Would that dog then be deemed, if there's a complaint, aggressive? So two things, um, the biting, scratching language that's in red on the very top of it, that's all the language that's being repealed and taken away. Okay. And so um, I know Kale did a big rewrite to what I have. We have definitions up front. Give me one second to double check that. Thank you. concern with that is there's a lot of you know there's so many dog lovers in the community and you know intimidation by those that may not be dog owners and don't see it the same way and look at a dog as being aggressive mm -hmm. dogs protect their territory so if they're in there somebody's coming near their yard they're gonna obviously right barking so um this is a good discussion because this is kind of the split that was in the city attorney's office as well. Um, and so my review is that this is only for dangerous and prohibited animals, um, not necessarily just dogs. I think we talk about dogs the most because that's what we get, but Correct. maybe a snake gets out once, I don't know. Um, so in talking with Kiel, I can't speak for him, but I believe his opinion on that, the, one of the iterations of the code had a, like a nuisance animal section where it would be identified as like citation stuff. So um, excessive barking, howling, whining, charging fences, stuff like that. Um, I think that was removed from this iteration of the code uh, because it was Kale's perspective that that exists elsewhere, um, specific chapter 18, I believe. And so I will confirm that, make sure it's in there. But we do have like a, a nuisance animal section in chapter 18. And so we didn't want to have two sections of the code competing for enforcement. So I'm not sure if I answered your question, but I, I, I think you did. Okay. Um, but I the to. wording is very important because obviously, when there's residents that look up our ordinances, they want clear language that right. is not going to conflict. So that makes sense uh, if there's clear definitions of that, in my opinion. That's that's all I have. To, does anyone else have any points of discussion? You know, I know Alderman Haas asked it to come back. He didn't really specify why. Is that I'm something sure. that we took? Go ahead. Professor. I believe he just wanted just to have some discussion because they were ch larger changes. Well, okay. And so, just to speak to that again, so Chapter 18 is all nuisance conditions, and so I think Kill's perspective was instead of having a nuisance animal and then a nuisance animal section somewhere else, Chapter 18 sub. 1803 sub 3 sub I says noisy animals, keeping or harboring of any animal which by frequency or frequent or habitual howling, yelping, barking, crowing, or making of other noises to the great discomfort and peace and quiet of the neighborhood or in such a manner as to materially disrupt or annoy persons in the neighborhood who are of ordinary sensibility. So you can be cited for that. I think his goal was not to double enforce. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to give a scenario as an a animal owner dog specifically. Uh, years back, I had a Sheltie uh, who was very communicative. And uh, I was not familiar with the breed, so much to say I called a dog rescue because I was like, I, I don't know how I'm going to deal with the barking. And I certainly don't want my neighbors to deal with the barking. So uh, after learning what I needed to do as an owner, I recall leaving during the day to make a short trip to the store, come back, and I had a notice from the police on my door. It was during the day, and uh, the dog, dog was in the house, and it was explained to me. They looked through the window. The dog did what the dog was supposed to do, bark at the door, uh, quieted down afterwards. Uh, but I was told do that due to the fact that there was a report on file. If I get another complaint, I was going to get a citation. And, and I didn't feel that to be fair. Does this fall into that category of how, uh, is there, um, I guess, uh, what word am I looking for? Uh, the police to make that decision? Discretion. Discretion, correct. It is 
citable under Chapter 18, that would not be something that's generally citable, or here's a different way to put it. Um, and you maybe only know this if you're on the Administrative Appeals Review Board. There's the reactive response and the proactive response. The reactive response is a ticket for an act that had taken place. So the belt, um, barking or yelping or whatever it's going to be might be the reactive response. What you're asking would not fall under the dangerous or the prohibited animal statute because that revolves around fights or bites or scratches or something along those lines. And so okay. yelping would not give you, yelping or barking would not give you a dangerous dog um, okay. in any capacity. It would have to have some sort of incident that would be uh, injuring a person or unprovoked and off the owner's property. You can't get a proactive Correct. Resolution. It would only be reactive. You might, be able to get, you might get a ticket if the officer thinks this is an ongoing problem. Okay. And, and that's where the question came just based on that nuisance part mm -hmm. that, we, that you brought up. So, okay. That, that covers it for me. Are there any other questions? Okay. So do we uh, take this back as a vote or? Okay. Yeah, I would read it out just like the rest of the committee report when we go back. Okay. All right. So, uh, so we need to make a motion. We need to make a motion. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. All right, item six is 02023 ordinance to allow for optional bicycle and motorcycle, uh, motor bicycle registration by city residents. Um, I looked this over and I think if you want to get some clarification on it, the changes is this is optional versus required. Okay. I believe that that is looking it up. And, and my question <laughs> would be, <laughs> you know, my question would be, uh, as a bike owner, well, my statement as a bike owner, would I choose to license it? If I, if I, what are the benefits of licensing your bicycle or your e-bike besides the fact if it were stolen, it could be identifiable? I believe that would be the benefit, yes. Yeah. Okay. You can optionally tell and register that bike so that it can be tracked at some point in right. the future. I wouldn't consider this something that, okay, it's an automobile where we have state statutes that cover this. So why would we, you know, insert ourselves on a local level to adopt an ordinance that by choice, if you, you're taking a chance of getting your bike stolen and never recovering it, that's on you. That's my thought on it. So I think that's an overreach of us to have to try to get in the pockets a little bit more for a license fee. And that's just the, the honest truth on my end. So just for clarification, so making a mandatory license would be that concern versus an optional license here. I'd know, be fine with. There's no enforcement, there's no, it's just. Right. If you want to tell us, we can try to help you later. Exactly. Okay. So you, you can still license it if you choose to. They're mm -hmm. still available, but it's not a mandatory. So like, what would the ramifications be that you don't license your bike? I mean, is there something in our in our language? No, there's that, no penalty Okay, you're caught section. riding your bike and you don't have it licensed, you're going to get a ticket? There's no penalty section associated with Okay, this is nonsense. Well, that's kind of useless. Yeah, it's nonsense. <laughs> so, okay. All right, uh, is there any further discussion? Anybody have any input? Okay, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Okay, there's a second. second. Okay, motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item 70203 ordinance incorporating general license disqualifiers into alcohol licensing. Uh, that's a lot of wording here. That yeah, I, I would like some one. clarification. Yeah, that one I can speak to you. Thank you. Um, so prior to Kill rewriting the code for alcohol licensing, we had a section of license or in the in that area that would say you have to operate. Um, sometime within the last 30 days. We don't want people just sitting on licenses and just kind of monetizing them or having them be a commodity um, because there are a finite number of them that the community can use. So um, that was in the code. Kill took that whole section and put it into chapter 9.51 and applied that to every, you have to basically affirmatively adopt that section. Um, there was a request for a potential for me to review a property that wasn't operating, and I learned at that point that we don't have that 30-day window in there any longer. And so really all this is doing, and the only thing this is doing, is adding those qualifications from 9.51 into 9.60, which is the licensing. Um, and those include, and let me get them really quick, but it's, it's stuff that we're already enforcing, but for really that 30-day window. So give me one second. 
and it's only adopting 9.511A through E. So nothing else in that process is being adopted. And it's basically that the person is disqualified um, because of section 9.49. I hate sending people around to different things, but really what that one is, um, is that they have a bunch of different disqualifications that we already consider, like um, they owe fees to the city, um, they're not on the payment plan, stuff that we already enforce. So that one's nothing new. Um, failed to maintain, maintain order on the premises, we can already enforce that in for license, so we're not adding anything there. Um, not exercise the license activity for 30 consecutive days, that's what we wanted to have added on. The activities have caused a public nuisance. I can really kind of allege that just by incidents and someone's complaint as it is. And not complied with the conditions under which it was granted. That one's a good addition, frankly, because when we issue these licenses, there's another section that kind of tick hits on this too, but when you issue a license and you put conditions on it, we want to be able to revoke for that if we want to. So we're just making this section more explicitly in there so I can actually do more enforcement. Sounds good to me. Madam Chair? Go ahead. Hold so on. 30 days you're not open? We're, we can. If somebody tells me, I'm not like going around to these places. I can if you guys want me to. I can go <laughs> try them all. <laughs> um, can you do that again? Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but if, if basically if planning tells me that like, hey, this is just, they've been sitting on the license, nothing's happening, then I can come forward on that and bring it up. Sounds I believe you were on the committee last time when this became, was an issue. Yes. Yeah. Packer season. We'll open in Packer season. <laughs> wow, Nick. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen this side of you. <laughs> Are you finished, gentlemen? I am. Okay. Any other How discussion? Can I come back on that? All right. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion, motion carries. Adjourned. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. We are adjourned. <laughs>